Hi guys, so in this video we will discuss about system design roadmap from basics to advanced. So system design we all know like is very important for software engineers, right? Because we have to deal with applications which are large scale applications and we should be aware about how to design a system which can be scalable, right? Which is reliable. So let's start. So the phase one is fundamentals of system design, right? So if you're starting your journey as a programmer or engineer, you should start with fundamentals of system design. So basically you should be aware what is system design and why is system design important. And then you should be having knowledge of basics of low level design versus high level design. So in low level design, you should be familiar with oops principle right solid principles and then you should be familiar with design patterns like different kind of design patterns like creational structural singleton and there are other like eight to ten design patterns right like factory design pattern so you should be aware about all the design patterns you should be aware about uml diagrams like how to create them how to link class sequence activity right so you should be aware of all these at least a basic knowledge of lld and then you should be having basic knowledge of high level design so high level design means you should be having basic knowledge of architectural patterns like what is monolithic what is microservice what is event driven right so you should be aware of basics of different architectural patterns and design principles so when i say design principle you should be aware like what is scalability right what is reliability so what's the difference between scalability and reliability right right so all that basics you should be having of different design principles and then once you're done with hld then you should be aware about databases and storage right at the end we are all playing with the data right without data there is no uh, system there is no application right so database design principles so you should be aware about normalization denormalization indexing right so these all comes under database design principles and then these days no sql databases are in trend right so you should be aware like relational versus no sql or how or how to migrate from relational to no sql right and some of the theoretical part like cap theorem right consistency availability partitioning trade-offs right and once you are done with database basics then you should be having knowledge of networking basics so networking basics are very important so you should be aware of what is tcp ip uh, different kind of protocols right http https how the handshaking happens right what are load balancers what is cdn what is web socket right or if you see simple example when you type like let's say youtube.com right how the request is reaching to the youtube server and how you are able to see the response right so if you study whole pipeline you should be able to understand like a dns tcp ip right then https load balancer all that things you should be able to understand so these are a lot of topics, but this is really necessary. Like even if you are fresher or even if you are stud a student who is preparing for the uh, engineer role, right? So this is very important information. So once you are done with the fundamentals, right? You can proceed to intermediate system design. So in intermediate system design, now you already know the basics concept, right? So now you have to know about scalability and reliability right so scalability you should be able to know how to scale your application right whether it can be horizontal whether it can be vertical and then different techniques like sharding is there partitioning is there right and caching strategies right for reliable system you should be aware like redundancy replication right fault tolerance data backup consistency model right so all that things comes under scalability and reliability because at the end of the day your system should be scalable and reliable right that's the requirement from all the companies and then api design you should be aware about restful api principles right then graphql basic graphql is really in trend these days so you should know like how graphql works and where you can use graphql right where is very important right when it comes to system design because everything have a trade-off so if you use this thing you are compromising on something if you use this thing you are compromising on something else right so it all depends on the use case so you should be aware like when to use graphql like how to do versioning documentation rate limiting we already saw right that all comes under a uh, fault tolerance and multi-threading and all that things you should be aware security authentication authorization right so this all comes under concurrency and parallelism and then security you should be able to have a secure api right it is very important right because security is directly linked with the company's brand name right so let's say if some issue comes or security breach is there 
in youtube google right it directly impacts their brand value right so no company wants to compromise their brand because of this security issue right so that's why security is very important so you should be aware how to do it and what are the different design patterns for that right so again these are really lot of topics again but if you are already aware of phase one and phase two right so you are already in very good uh, i think situation or you are already having a lot of knowledge about system design and if you want to proceed further then we have a phase three advanced system design so in advance then you should be aware of microservices like how the service discovery happens right what are the principles of microservices inter-service communication like in spring boot you we use eureka right uh, so all that things you should be aware of that and then even driven systems are in trend now right so you should be aware about kafka you should be aware about the rabbit mq what is cqrs pattern why companies use cqrs pattern right that you should be aware and then real-time system right real-time system like chat system right how how it works like or if you go to some stock market website right how it works so you should be aware about web sockets events ssc real-time messaging systems right so you should be aware how to deal with real-time systems and then distributed system of course so this is very important like how to handle distributed system and what is consensus algorithms right we have different algorithms and these are very important for fault tolerance and performance i think we have one more i missed it here i will just write zap here so then you should be able to handle transactions across distributed system right because imagine like you have a system where you have 500 microservices right and everything is linked to each other right the communication is happening so you have to imagine in a way like how the big applications are working right so for small applications you write code in any way you deploy on one server it will work fine right but issue starts happening when there is a lot of data to deal with plus a lot of traffic to deal with, right? One is you have a lot of data, one is you have a lot of traffic, right? When these two things combine, right, the issues and performance start declining, right? That's why all of these big large scale companies, right, invest on system design. That's why they will give you good packages to, to their engineers, right? So that they can scale the system, their system is reliable, right? So that's why it's very important to know how to handle all this distributed system and high availability, right? Disaster recovery is very important. Yeah, like imagine you have a server and if some earthquake happens, right? Or if there is some fire in the building, right? How to recover from that disaster? So just think like you have a Facebook servers and in one of the servers, there is a fire, right? Uh, in the building, then still the Facebook will not stop, right? It will not impact to us, but how they have handled it inside, it's very strategic right you it's not like by luck they are doing right it's all the strategies they are also doing dr exercises right planning goes into it right so you should be aware about that and then once you are done with advanced then you should proceed with case studies and design patterns so design patterns like you should be applying different uh design patterns to real world scenarios and there are a lot of anti-patterns you want to avoid right like there is design anti-patterns like over engineering or reinventing the wheel there is architectural anti-pattern like spaghetti code if your code is so hard to debug right database anti-patterns like denormalization or nickel query abuse right concurrency anti-patterns like race condition deadlock is there scalability anti-pattern like tight coupling is there right so i've just mentioned one two examples here but there are like four or five examples in each of the anti-patterns so you should know like when designing your system you should avoid like anti-patterns right and then we have security anti-pattern also like if you are hard coding some password or insufficient input validation is there which can attack the database right so all that things can happen and you can i have listed down four case studies but you can list down any number of case studies here based on the time you want to put in you can design url shortener social media e-commerce video streaming even you can design like uber kind of platform right so any case studies are unlimited right so and when you're designing the case study right you should be able to have requirement gathering like what your system will do how the your system will scale why you are building it how many people will use it right so all that things will come into requirement gathering then high level design low level design you should be able to create uml you should be able to create okay i will use microservice for this or i should go for graphql or how i will do fault tolerance right so all that things will come under this under low level design and high level design and then scaling and optimization like once you have built it how you will scale it how you will do fault tolerance how you will uh, basically 
optimize it right so our last phase will be tools and techniques right so tools and techniques are very important like what you will use for monitoring so if you don't know what to use or if you don't have a knowledge of tools in the market right what you will suggest right so you should be aware what monitoring tools observability tools are there in the market right and then you should be able to pick one of them based on your use case right like we have prometheus grafana for logging we have splunk elk stack right and distributed tracing we have and then performance uh, we should be able to do load testing profiling tools and then for ci cd like you should be aware how to set up ci cd right because these days they want deployment maybe every sprint or maybe once a week right so how you can push your code faster and your code should be reliable right so th- so to do that ci cd is very crucial and then deployment strategy right so depending on your use case you have to choose deployment strategy right so that you can revert in case of issues without impacting the consumers right or clients and then you should be aware docker kubernetes service mesh is very important and then of course best practices so system design is something you have to learn like every day like you have to learn maybe your past experience or the applications which are already running in production right so you have to stay updated you have to stay updated which tools are there right with the industry trends basically what cloud tools are coming how you can make your system more reliable and scalable right so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content